this might be a tougher matchup, you know, between these this is, I was gonna, these three Assassin's Trophy and three Abrupt Decay from Henry Henry Whalen. That's a lot of removal for the deck, this matchup. Right, and the nice thing about it is that you can just tag whatever you want. And it sounds silly to say that about things that destroy target permanent, but that's kind of the premium you're paying for having a bunch of two-drop removal spells over the more traditional one-drop removal. Austin starting on Terramander. If you missed it earlier, 13 creatures in Austin's list. Four Delver of Secrets and then three ofs of Terramander, Young Pyromancer, and True Name Nemesis. I know you were wondering, hoping to see maybe light up the stage here. Looks like Austin's though is not on that plan. Right, and kind of the draw to not having light up the stage is you just know what all your cards are going to do at each phase of the game. You don't have those clunky multiple light up the stage draws. So rather than having the more powerful draw twos in your deck, you're just trying to play a more consistent game plan, and you also have the opportunity to lean a bit more into your reactive cards like Days and Force of Will. A swing in for one as Austin starts things off with the Terramander attack. He is a three True Name Nemesis deck, and that's important to note because Henry Whalen, once on True Name Nemesis on the board, does not have a way to answer it in his main deck. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Did I miss one? No, that's true. You're right. You're just okay. right. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, no, there is one. No, no, they're, they're oh, there to no. stay. I, I just wanted to scare you. <laughs> Look, if you're not inviting me to help convoke the, uh, the venerated Loxodon in the hall, I'm not doing you any favors either. Look, there's only five people can convoke it. You just gotta, you gotta be at the front of the line. No, it's fine. It's fine, Matthias. It's so fine. I always think that Luxon looked like it might have been a five-five. It no might have already been the second one. No one's feelings are hurt. <laughs> Henry takes the hit. He fetches here on the second turn. So his ways to answer it will be with True Name on the stack. He does have four copies of Force of Wilder in the deck for game one, as well as three copies of Days. And those are basically just going to be the answers that he's trying to hold up for specifically True Name Nemesis while whittling down Colin's resources other ways. Yeah, and he saw his first attempt at that was him to Turok. Now, Austin had a Spell Pierce, so only got one card instead of two. Right, and this is a spot where, on one hand, you want him to hit multiple cards, but you're also okay with it just one for one. Big check. It was the true name Nemesis, and if you look at Henry's lands, there wasn't even an island there, so no fear of days. Henry doesn't have the force of will, and Austin has stuck the 3-1. That's going to change the game. This is a big problem for Waylon. He needs to start developing things like Tarmogoyf or something that can close the game and yeah. race Collins. Because he can't stop the damage. He tries for Liliana the Last Hope, but Austin has a daze. And this is starting to get a little bit out of control in Colin's favor. Well, right, there's no life gain on Henry's side. And there's no removal for True Name. So the only thing he can do is race back. And Austin, by removing Henry's green mana here, is going to make that so difficult. Right. And when you have cards like True Name Nemesis, where they aren't literally card advantage engines, but they give you a sort of virtual card advantage where they invalidate all the grinding that Wayland's trying to do, all of a sudden the entire game becomes about the damage output yeah. of both players. So Waylon needs to find some sort of Tarmogoyf-esque racing tool. Problem is, is, when it's about damage, Austin Collins is sending burst lightnings up, chain lightnings upstairs. It's not exactly what you want to You think burst lightnings and chain legacy? Lightning. This is what chain happens lightning. when you don't invite your burn friends to the convoke party. <laughs> it's the other lightning one. Uh -huh. It's three. It's there. Chain lightning in. Right. Three copies of that and four lightning bolt. Look, sometimes you get to five mana. Maybe you got to four of them. You never know. I don't know much about five mana things, Matthias. Look, five mana is where the fun starts. I wouldn't know. Three lands up from Henry, but it's the attack continue on Austin's side. He's already got Henry down to ten. This is going to put it to six. Austin, he likes the way the board is right just fine. He'll pass. Right, he's just so far ahead on this race. And that Terramander here, not doing that yeah. mid-combat, actually changed the clock. It's two turns. And there's no with no life gain, no blockers, no removal, it's two turns. Exactly. This is going to be a huge problem for Waylon, where Waylon just needs to find a way to get on the battlefield exactly this turn, or he's going to die to True Name yeah. Nemesis before he gets to do anything. Yeah, I don't see how he, how he does it, based on the list he has here. Let's he's got to show us something. See. It involves multiple Tarmogoyfs this turn. Well, he's cast Sylvan Library. Austin <laughs> does it even on tap. Just says, "Yeah, this is attacking again." You're at three. That's that's a blocking fish, not not a, or an attacking fish, not a blocking yeah. fish. And there's the chain lightning again. This is progress, Matthias. Austin bursting his way to a game one win. You know, 
there we go, switching it back. I hate you. 1-0 for Austin Collins. Make sure it worked there. He sticks the true name nemesis, and that really is the story. We do look at the sideboards. Okay, so Henry's main deck, cold to true name nemesis. Let's look at some ways he can answer that going forward. Marsh casualties, very nice. All right, two copies. I'm Sign me up. Uh, Austin's also a young Pyromancer deck, so those that's what it this is the matchup it's for. Right, yeah. and past that, we also have copies of Pernicious Deed, Diabolic Edict. Ooh. Very, very nice answers. Pernicious, Pernicious deed. deed. That's a that's an old card. That has the old card frame on it. Oh, that card clears everything. Even big Terramanders. Yeah. Scary Terries, as they're called. I think I know from Cube it doesn't. Oh, does it? I forgot whether it clears Planeswalkers. It might be one of those annoying ones. It, it does not. It, is it one of those annoying ones that lists artifact, the things? Artifact, creature, enchantment. Because it yeah. used to hit artifact lands as well. Back yeah. in Extended when Affinity was a deck. I remember when Planeswalkers first came out, you'd look at like those sweepers and you have to say, some of them say non-land and some of them listed out all the things, but the ones that listed them out like were made at a time before Planeswalkers were a card. So oh, yeah. they just happened to not hit them. Oh, it's nice. I had a Super Friends Commander deck that played Pernicious Deed and Neverland's Disc for a while, yeah. but not Oblivion Stone. Yeah, Nevernero's Disc is another one where it doesn't yep. kill Planeswalkers. Exactly. There are so many of those that are nice. There's, um, oh gosh, what's what's the X spell out of uh, Dissension? It's a split card. Uh, crime and Punishment? Yeah, Crime Punishment. I think, I think that one, I, I'm pretty sure that one doesn't hit Planeswalkers. Yeah, that one doesn't either. All, all kinds of good stuff. Obliterate doesn't hit doesn't Planeswalkers. Hit planeswalkers. Jockle Hops doesn't hit Planeswalkers. Exactly. These are, yeah, <laughs> I am. I well, because they couldn't, all the red ones don't, because they couldn't say non-land, because red can't blow up enchantments. That's not allowed. Exactly. See, this is the stuff I used to do in Commander. You can, you can tell I was a lot of fun at parties. Here's the, my, my favorite in Commander, you know, is Nevenerals Disc. Sacrifice is not in the cost. Oh. Oh, that's, ooh, Slow Bad is a great Commander yeah. for that, where you sack something to make your Neverland's Disc have Indestructible and then activate it. Yeah, that's fun. You know, I don't know if you've ever been on the, the player who might go Synth Lattice, Darksteel Forge, Nevenerals Disc. Oh. Oh, That's nice. Arkham Daxon every, was my first every, competitive every commander turn, deck. Every turn, you just blow up everybody else's everything. It's nice. It's just so much work to not actually win the game. Yeah, that's why it's fun. Uh, <laughs> you need to you need to demoralize people in your victory. See, that's that's clearly the goal. One of these days, I'm going to have an aneurysm when you say that kind of stuff, Matthias. This is. This is egregious. One game away from locking up that top eight spot <laughs> is Austin Collins. He picking up the win from six, 16. They, last year, he had three open top eights. He has top eighted the last three invitationals he has played as well. Yeah, really just had his breakout at the season two invitational in 2017. Right. Reached the top four, I believe. He top four all of them. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Oh, we know. We were there. It yeah. is incredible the, how good this person is at Magic to have seemingly come out of nowhere. But we watch him play, it feels like every weekend, and he's just, he's very tight. Yeah, strong play here. Um, member of Team Nova with the purples. That's the day two jerseys. They switch it up. Brought to you by Inkling Customs. <laughs> <laughs> Henry on the play here for the second game. Delver of Secrets from Austin Collins. One of the big draws to the Is It Delver deck over the Grixis one is you do have those extra one drops between Delver and Terramander. So last game we saw that Terramander come out and get, it was worth what, four or five points of damage? Yeah. Which is something that, something like Young Pyromancer would have been checked much faster by Assassin's Trophy or just any removal spell, for example, and also not been worth the same amount of damage as that Terramander. So is it Delver being more proactive and better at applying early pressure is something that's going to reward Collins in this kind of matchup, where rather than trying to go bigger, you just want to kill your opponent? The first of the big two-mana plays from Soul Time Midrange is him to Turok. You know, outside of True Day Nemesis, I really like where Henry's coming from in this matchup. Cards like him to Turok, Baleful Strix, figure to be pretty good here. If right. He Against anything fair, if you're given time, your cards are just going to be worth more than theirs, pound for pound. He manages to nab a Terramander and a basic island. We pass back to Austin's. He does get the transform off of Brainstorm, so can start hitting in for some damage before while he still has cards. Now the question is whether he had another land or whether that land was lost to him to Turok. 
He's going to ponder here. Ponder is not a good sign for that land. Yeah, and I don't think he found one in the top three. He's see it on his face. But these are fine, but shuffle, yeah, he's going to have to shuffle, shuffle them away. Shuffle, 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 mushroom, mushroom. <laughs> <laughs> you can see the I hate him to tore <laughs> off on his face. <laughs> Woo! That was hit a land. It's Wasteland. He's going to waste Henry. Decides to go for the green source. He could knock him off of green or blue. He takes rid of care of green mana. When you see Assassin's Trophy in the deck, game mm -hmm. one, you're much more interested in doing the one that hits both halves of that kind of spell. Land to play around days from Henry, and then he fatal pushes away the Insectile Aberration. Not a bad turn. Back to Austin we go. If his creatures keep getting cleaned up like this, things are going to go in Henry's direction. He brainstorms to try to find more. And this is exactly the kind of game that Waylon wants to be playing. Collins isn't actually applying any kind of pressure here. And so if both players are just playing lands and taking draw steps, that's going to end up favoring Waylon. Now, what do you think about this? Austin in that brainstorm, he found a copy of Blood Moon. It looks like he's boarded them in. Now, it's on top of his deck right now. He's either shuffling it away or he's hiding it from a potential discard spell. Unclear which. At this point, it's likely that he's hiding it from a, a discard spell. He doesn't have a way to shuffle it away immediately, but it is the kind of card where if you're thinking you're going to go to turn 100, that's something that actually helps you have game there. Yeah, now... Bigger problem. After that brainstorm, he did not play a second land. That is true. <laughs> so maybe it does, he may be locked on the brainstorm right now. We'll see if he has another cantrip to get himself out of this. Right. These are the types of situations where Collins knows this game is going to go on for a while. He didn't see ways for Waylon to apply actual pressure in the first game. So his plan here is to try and set something up where Blood Moon will do kind of what True Name Nemesis did in the first game, where however many cards Waylon has, they don't matter because he can't cast them or they don't have an effect. And that's really his Hail Mary to get back into this game. Baleful Strix from Waylon. Gonna draws him a card as he starts to develop. He's the only player with lands right now, so not too shabby. Goes for a Brainstorm. Another one from Austin. Can, try to, can he get a second land? No. Uh, no. <laughs> nope. So imagine lands and note how different the cards in Colin's hand are than that, <laughs> what you just imagined. Yeah, they are the other thing. They are right. not lands. Yeah, okay, I get one. it. I can I can picture it now. You always had a good imagination. Yeah, that's I had to, what I like about so you. First I imagined lands, and then I imagined not lands. <laughs> I and imagine then I went you with spend the most one. of your day imagining lands, yeah. knowing you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, most frequently frequent gather Valica, searches are lands. Yeah, yeah. What are, sun home. What are all the lands we can get? These things are nice. Ooh. They can't even be countered. I don't see how you're resisting just Googling Colony Garden right now. I know you're thinking about it. I got a thing I've been working on. I want to Vesuva some Valakuts. That's what I'm working on right now. It's bad. <laughs> I want to have a deck where it's just, it's, it's eight Valakuts. You got to play Prismatic Omen. And it gets, oh, that's all you do. You Can make, we call it's it? Nice. Is, I want to make sure I'm not about to say something gross or raunchy in this pun. Adicut. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah there, that was like a minefield. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's just like hold this on, is a lot of on. random syllables. Is, are any of these going to make bad words? Himaturok takes Flusterstorm and Pyroblast. Then Henry follows up with Tarmogoy. If this is all going according to plan. Right, and this is actually the way that Waylon gets to close the door before Collins gets back in the game. That Blood Moon's not going to be good enough anymore. Are we keeping on top with Ponder? I think we found a land. Right on time. I think he's debating... What are the odds it's not a land? What if it's if it's a land, but it's not a fetch land? Would you keep it? It's just a, you know, I think that would be that would be the borderline decision. That's the one where it's tough, or it's like wasteland. <laughs> if it's wasteland, I'm shipping it. Wasteland, you're just like ah. So he shuffled and drew, and it's not a land. Oh, it's wasteland. It was wasteland. There we go. You can't avoid it. Wastes away underground sea. It's hard to be that upset over not finding more lands when your deck plays 18 total and you have three in your graveyard and one on the battlefield. The attacks are going to start here on Henry's side. He has five power in play. 
Swings across and drop to Austin down to 14. It's got a nice four turn clock going. Just a ponder, hangs back on some basic lands. Make sure that Blood Moon can't get him. Another wasteland from Austin. He's technically drawing lands, but I'm sure Henry's fine with these trades at this point. He has things on the battlefield. Terramander, Baleful Strix's best friend. And it will get dazed. Good sequencing by Austin to waste away the dual land, but doesn't really matter. Swing in again, Austin to nine. Something Draws. else he could have tried there was playing the Wasteland and casting the Terramander in order to be ha play around days, and then after Terramander resolves Wastelanding. What if he dazes the Terramander and... Yeah, okay, I see. Then you just pay. And Austin taking a hit, taking a hit, and casts a blocker. That technically allows him to continue playing. It's hard to imagine how Collins gets back in the game from this spot. Well, if, I think it's easy to write the line is if Henry has all lands, if Rep to K won't do it. If Henry had all lands, he can do chump blocker until he gets all the way up to turn in Nemesis. Somehow it doesn't die, then he starts blocking, and then something happens. Right. There's a line. It's not going to happen, and they are tied up at 1-1. One and one. bit of a bad side of variance for Austin. The, the whole chain event started when he was pondering for a second land, and he had to shuffle off first ponder, drew, and then he found no land. Oh, and then I think it started way before that. You no, know, the second time it happened. That happened oh. twice. Oh, right. The first time it happened, it's begun it. And then, like, eventually, <laughs> like, four turns later, it happened again. Look, it felt like we were kind of on repeat. Like, Austin, you know, I think the movie's older than him, but it's like he, we were watching Groundhog Day. That movie's definitely older than Austin. Look, maybe. Yeah. Probably. That first ponder is a real doozy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So they're going to have a third game here on table number one. In the meantime, next week is Star City Games Regionals. It's our regional championships for season one. That is a modern constructed tournament, so you can get out your best modern decks and compete here to win your regional champion. Ship. Now, first of all, if you haven't registered and want to make sure you get to do so, we get our free tokens and playmats, and they are guaranteed to the first 200 players at each location. You can see the art here for it. Now, you also, for attending, will get the newest invitational token. That is Andrew Jessup's Monarch token here. He was the winner of the Season 2 Invitational at SEG Con Winter. He got his likeness on the Monarch. Now, you, it is not just the regional championships, it is part of the SEG Tour, which means, first of all, there are some prizes to the entire top eight. There's $5,000 worth of prizes given away that weekend. SCG points to everyone in attendance, including a full 20 points to the winner. And for the top eight finishers in the tournament, it is going to be invites to the Invitational at SCG Con in Roanoke this June. And for anyone who is maybe thinking about making a run at the SCG, at the Players' Championship at the end of the year or want to buy at our events, we're so early in the year, 20 points is a lot. That is right, a real right. spike. Yeah, we are at a point right now, you know, the, the leader is 64 points, Abe Corrigan, going into this event. So 20, that is almost in enough. If you, if you have zero right now, it, it'll get you into about 50th if you win, just from nowhere. It'll it'll put you even, yeah, exactly. 47th is 20 points right now, and that's from nothing. And that's if you've never played anything on the tour yet. Exactly. If you've had maybe one, two good finishes, that puts you closer. Even if you haven't, you're in prime position. You win one of those, you day two a couple of events, and you're very likely to just start having free wins at the beginning of our open events. Yeah, huge amount of points. And you consider how many points uh, that it's. 25 winning an SCG Tour event and that we have 12 different regionals and 20 points given away at each of them, this is going to be a big part of the Season 1 leaderboard. Exactly. Things are going to shuffle up a lot and the first ones are worth so much more than the later ones just because of how those buys end up working and translating throughout the entire year. So make sure you manage to come out. Start, Go.starcitygames.com slash regionals. That is next weekend, the regional championships. And for game three, Austin Collins going to try to get another one here. Post board, Henry does have more removal. It didn't really play here as Austin kind of just had one of those fail rate games of his own deck. Yeah, it didn't play because Austin didn't play. <laughs> he played a lot of cantrips. That he pondered is a lot true. and brainstormed a lot. Yeah, thinking that isn't worth that much. Starts on Terramander. He's had this card all three games. Remember this one from... 
guilds of Ravnica. Whoa. Ravnica Allegiance. Ravnica Allegiance. That is a Civic card. I was going to say Ravnica card. Block. Yeah, but they're not blocks anymore. They're just sets. Ravnica Allegiance. It's from Ravnica. Hits in for one to start things off. And Austin going to brainstorm here on the second turn. Because of cards like Marsh Casualties, he wants to be careful how much he commits to the board. At the same time, he wants to fill up his graveyard for Terramander with lots of spells. Not creature spells, though. Not creature spells. <laughs> he's, he's surely conscientious of that card existing. When you have something like Young Pyromancer, when you have all these X1s that are going to be able to deal enough damage to win games by themselves, you end up being able to just play games where you only develop one threat at a time and go, all right, how much damage is this worth? With a card like Terramander in your deck, do you think it makes you cantrip more aggressively? A lot of times you'd see a player here just do nothing, say land go instead right. of casting the Brainstorm. Yes, absolutely. Just, there's almost a point where every card you do is sort of like a lotus petal when trying to adapt this Terramander here. So since you're getting to use that mana sooner and apply pressure sooner as well in your aggressive strategy, you're, you're just very interested in using these spells. You may not wait to get that max value brainstorm because you just want to get a brainstorm out. Exactly. What's the, what's the old saying, the best brainstorms are the ones you never cast? That's just not the case in this. Yeah. First move by Henry. I believe a Baleful Strix hanging out in his hand. That is a mighty fine card against uh, creatures. Yeah. Against any of them. Well, not True Name Nemesis, but what? any of the other ones. <laughs> yeah. Well, not, not Young name. Pyromancer, but this creature. Like half of them. Is, it's good against it half of them. Of, well, it's, yeah, it's it's a little over. Yeah, okay, good. We, we can agree on that. But it's good here. <laughs> Well, he, before he does that, he's going to try to clear the way with him to Turok. That will get the days in Austin's hand. So no discard of two. It doesn't mean there's no true name hanging out, though. Austin back down on mana. Right, and that's kind of the draw to this type of, we'll say, exchange, where even though this him to Turok wasn't worth two cards, it was worth a turn of development, which is honestly something that Waylon is going to be fine with, since all he's sure. trying to do is get himself to a later phase of the game than Collins in order to convert his cards into card advantage. Back to Austin we go. Now two spells in Graveyard, thanks to Daze. He's going to slow down the game even more as he wastelands away Henry's Underground Sea. Attacks and casts Delver of Secrets. If Marsh Casualties happens, it happens. Yeah. One thing this could signal from Collins is just having several threats in his hand. Sure. Where even if there's a two for one, he's not going to be activating this Terramander anytime soon. So he needs to just deal more than one point of damage a turn. Yeah, Henry sees that too. He played a land to protect from days and Fatal pushed away the Delver, figuring that Terramander still a ways off on becoming a 5-5. Five five. Right, adapting still costs six mana here. And back over we go to Henry, another basic land. Two mana, here's Baleful Strix. She can't play around the Pyroblast. That's what Austin has to answer it. Puts that third spell into the graveyard. Got to feel good from Colin's side. That's just the cleanest answer to the card in the entire deck. And sometimes it's a little yeah. hard to line up Pyroblast against these kind of Golgari-based mid-range decks. No third land from Austin. It is a young Pyromancer. And again, we look at whether or not Marsh Casualties is the card hiding out. It is Leovold, Emissary of Trest from Henry. Dormammu, I've come to bargain. Yeah, this is the replacement for Shardless. We said there was no Shardless agent in Henry's deck. Instead, his four mana, his three mana cards are two True Name Nemesis, two Leovold, two Leovold and a Liliana the Last Hope. This one not bad here. No, it's it's funny as it's just having a three three is great against Young Pyromancer. Lightning Bolt targets it, but Henry will get a card before Leovold exits the battlefield. Austin, however, gets an Elemental token, cracks in for three, and Henry's down to twelve. And the more turns we go, the more pressure I'm waiting on that Marsh Casualties. Henry needs to find one. Right, and the more turns that Collins has to just be able to draw things like Spell Pierce that can counter it, not necessarily in this context because he has so much mana, but Spell Pierce, Fluster Storm, Days, Force of Will, etc. These are all things that the longer the game goes, if Waylon's just playing lands, then his life's getting lower and it might not be good enough or it might be too late. But if he just draws spells, he's going to kind of suffer against Colin's conditional removal. Him to track hits two copies of True Name Nemesis. Uh, that is a strong two mana yeah. spell. It's strong. It's interesting, right? Because this board already demands a Marsh Casualties. So in that sense, True Name is 
kind of just more of the same, but Austin just continues developing into it. He attacks Henry down to eight. Well, Collins knows that Wayland doesn't have the fatal push there and didn't have a cantrip either. Yeah. So at this point, he's saying, you know, if you rip it, so be it. Henry's going to make a blocker. It's Tarmogoyf, but he's at eight. We're looking at spells. We have Lightning Bolt, Pyroblast, Daze. I think he's. it's just three. He's still a ways away. So the attack is only for one. Henry drops to seven. Can Austin get across this finish line? He's got a Blood Moon in hand, too. Full Moon Rising. Yeah, what a what a great card. Woo, Blood Moon. <laughs> I have an opinion on this card. Lay it on me. I don't like it. Henry down to six. I'm shocked. Who could have seen this? <laughs> That's opinion my, coming my opinion from is Matthias I Hunt. My opinion is I don't like it. It makes you feel any better. I'm yeah. in the same camp. It's definitely the kind of card where I think most of the people even playing it are kinda of just going, Well, no, that's not true. The, you know, you saw that flop from Collins and goes, well, yeah, I mean, go. This is what my card does. I, they love playing it. The people, they love it. No. Henry, I so draw here. This does tell Collins that Wayland does not have a basic forest in his deck. Yeah, I was going to ask on that. So he got another island. Oh, it's it was in his, his hand. hand. <laughs> <laughs> this is... Uh, but this he, is the worst Blood Moon in the history of Blood Moons. Well, it, actually, there's only one Swamp in Henry's deck, so we can't marsh casualties here. So maybe it's doing its job. Now, Collins can't cast True Name Nemesis ever. That seems fine for now. He attacks <laughs> Henry down to five. Makes another Terramander. Doubles the clock. Let's see if Waylon Hard casts this Force of Will in his hand. He does not. What is he looking for? Yeah, he can't casualties, just the single black. Three spells, four spells in Austin's graveyard. Henry says go. Pyroblast is the top card. It Delver transforms. This is lethal. That is five points in the air. Is that going to do it? Does Austin go to 12 and 1? Here's the swing, and from Henry. He's confirming, but it looks good here from my side. All right, three plus Four. one and one. I have fingers for this Master, one. That yeah, is five. We're going we're deferring to you on that one. Thanks. I got the ready. Thanks. I know. you're. The, I appreciate it. Assassin's Trophy from Henry. He stays <gasps> alive on Doesn't, it. No, that lets him no. activate Terramander. No. <laughs> <laughs> it, Austin can use the land. Yeah, that's his fourth land. He says, sure, I'll take a land. Wayne drops his hand on the table and says, if you got it, you got it. And Collins yeah. is searching. And he hand, with the handshakes out, an adapt from the Terramander. Austin Collins is 12 and 1. How do you feel if you were to learn a magic uh, format in five days?